Hello, it's Christy with Cabbage Grove Quilt Company. This is our Sew Along Quilt Along Week. So excited. I am so excited about our Quilt Along. It is going to be just so awesome. And this week we get to do our very first unit of our very first set of blocks. So this week you're going to use the corner beam tool from Studio 180 Design. This tool right here is called the corner beam. You all, if you don't have that, uh, we will put a link to our store where you can purchase that. But this is the tool that you are going to need to complete this week's project. So let's talk a little bit about this week's project. So we have got, you have a link in the Facebook page and on the blog post and on the YouTube site to this file. This is on our Google Drive and it's a public file and it's just got some instructions. So this block right here is the one that we are going to be constructing this week. That one right there. And it falls inside the larger block in the four corners. And this is, um, we're calling this our flower petals. Um, so that is the piece that we're going to be working on this week. You're going to get real comfortable real quick with this particular unit. You are going to make 72 four inch finished, four and a half inch cut size corner beams units. From that, you're going to use your background one, the faint plum, and your magenta fabric, or bright plum fabric. You're going to use those two colors. You're going to need to cut from the fabric one, the flower petals, nine five inch strips. Subcut that to 72 5 inch squares. For the background, you're going to need to cut six 5 inch strips. It's very important. Those cutting instructions are very important. You need to follow along with them very closely. Now, when it gets to the details of how to construct the block, you have this video here today of me walking you through that step by step, but also in your handout sheet, this link right here says click here takes you to the Studio 180 um, tools that has the free download to print it out in eight and a half by 11, or you refer to the tool folded up handout that you received with your package. So when you purchase a any tool from Studio 180, any tool from Studio 180, it comes with a handout. It's all different sizes. Some are small, some are big, some are really big. It just depends on the size of the tool has a handout and it gives you step by step by step instructions for both right handed and left handed with all kinds of details and all kinds of pictures. If you decide that that's just way too much to have all that and you prefer eight and a half by 11, all of their tool uh, reference sheets and instruction sheets are available on their website to print out at eight and a half by 11. And when we click that link right there, it is going to take us to that link. It's going to take us to those instruction sheets and you can just follow that along and print it out in eight and a half by 11. All right, so of that, you kind of have some detail now about how all that instruction is going to work and all the information you're given. So I went ahead, let's go over to my um, camera over here. I went ahead and cut my five inch squares for my, um, center flower petals, okay? So I have this here. Now, because I'm working with a batik and it's a little bit of a thinner fabric, I was able to go ahead and keep my layer at four and it stay together really well. If you're doing um, stuff that's not batik, you may need to only do two layers at a time, um, but just kind of play around with it and see. Now, what we need to follow along real closely with and I'm going to use this fabric, this green here in the back to kind of, so hopefully you can see the, well, nope, you can't see the lines. On your Studio 180 tool, there is a very thin dash line right here. See where my thumb is? That very first dash line off of the angle. So you have your angle and this thin dash line. And it says on there, center beam trim one. So that is our very first cut, is right along this dash line. Then we're going to rotate our tool just a little bit, and we have this Morse code looking dash line, two short, one long, two short, one long, and it says center beam trim two. So that's our second cut. All right, so our first one is right along here, 
right along there, and then our second one is right there. So let me show you how this is done. So I'm going to lay my squares. Again, I have four stacked up here, and I'm going to put that first dashed line on this outer edge of this square. All right, and we make our first cut slice, just like that. Keep my hand position, slide it away from the tool. These pieces here are waste. You can put those in another project or you can put it in your bye-bye bag. Now I'm going to take my piece and I'm going to angle it over and now see right here is that second trim, just like that. Make sure you're lined up really well. Second trim beam, center beam trim number two, right there. And you have this little point just like that. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that. See how I've got that just right along there, center beam trim two, that's right along that outer edge, and it's all positioned, and now we're going to cut. Okay, slide that over its waist. Now look, that is the unit we have right there. It kind of looks like a men's necktie. Okay. Now we take those, set them off to the side. Now let's talk a little bit about our stripped piece here. So your strip pieced, I have mine um, double folded. Totally fine to do that. You know, as long as you're strong and you're comfortable, you can do that. You don't have to do single fold. That would take forever. So I have this, I've already pre-pressed it and got some crinkles out of it and I have it double folded, all right? And it's just a five inch strip. So now I'm gonna take this over to where our cutting station is. Now, let's talk about where we're looking at on the ruler. So on the ruler, we have this dark black line and that's where we're gonna cut the side triangles. And then we're gonna rotate the ruler and come right along this little notch down here. All right, so we're gonna talk about that. So first, let's go over to the station here and cut off. We're going to cut some of the salvage off just to be sure we've got a nice clean start. So just kind of come in a little bit and just kind of cut that salvage off. Okay. There's a little extra piece hanging over. All right, now what we're going to do is line this up right on this black trim line. And what's great is you can see you've got this side triangle here. We're going to just zoom it in a little bit more so you can see that good and close. All right, so it's right along the edge of that black thick line, and it says side triangle trim number one. But then also at the right angle, you've got this straight across line that says for a four-inch finished unit, cut strips and squares five inches. All right, so now we're going to cut. And that is our first combo of our side units. Now we're going to take our ruler and we're going to rotate it. Okay, and it's going this way, so now we're going to turn it to where the point tip is going up. The point is going to go up. And right here along this bottom, you have this little line right down here. It's kind of hard to see sometimes that says second trim. Right there, it says second trim. And then you have this seam placement line and you're going to follow that. You're going to follow that line and then you're just going to cut. And then you now have another straight edge. So now I'm going to repeat. Go down along here. Do it one more time for you guys. Cut this one here. I just make a pile of them. And I come over so we can see this good. Second trim, side triangle trim, come up. All right, so now I have my cutting done. I have my waist put away. Now when I go to my sewing machine and I lay this out, I am very careful that I actually lay this out properly. I do not just willy-nilly this and think, oh, I can get that angle right. I actually take the time and lay it out so it looks like a square so I make sure that yes indeed I know what I'm doing because a lot of times if I just you know kind of fly by the seat of my pants I'll end up sewing these side triangles on like this and I don't care how many times you try that will never make a square it just won't do it so 
we have to put them this way. So make sure you lay those out, all right? And then we take it to our machine and do some stitching. Okay, so let's talk about the stitching for a minute. This is a very important step that you need to be sure. While there's a lot of forgiveness and we're trimming, we're making things bigger and we're going to trim it to a perfect size, we want to be sure that we are indeed, indeed, using a quarter inch seam at this time. So this is a perfect opportunity to take a test on your machine. Do a stitch on your sample, on your wonder fabric. Do a stitch on it and make sure you measure and it is a quarter of an inch. If it's not, this is the time to correct it and get it situated just perfectly. All right. Also, if you've never made a corner beam unit before, use some wonder fabric. That fabric that you bought on sale somewhere five years ago that you don't know what you bought it for and now when you look at it, it's kind of ugly. Mm, this is the time to use that fabric and just make some sample pieces out of, okay? That's what I do. That's exactly what I do. All right, let's talk about getting this stitched out. All right, so I showed you already laying it out. And so right here, we have made our first stitch. Now I took my side triangle from over here. Let's get this married up together. And I take my, make sure I only have one. I only need one. And I line it up and I make sure I have just a little bit of a lip on the top. And when I get down to the bottom, there's a little bit sticking out. You want a little bit on the bottom sticking out and a little lip on the top. It's very important. All right, and then I stitch right along. Stitched. And then it looks like this once it's stitched. All right, now I'm going to press it, and I always press my wings out. My side triangles go out. So see how I, I just lay this right on my ironing board just like this. Give it a little heat just to set it, fold it back, finger press it really good, take my iron, and then press it. Then I have this. Now I take my next side triangle, and again, I put it on just like before, and to where I have just a little bit left out on the top, and there's a little bit of an overhang on the bottom, a little overhang on the bottom, and a little bit on top, and I stitch just right down there, okay? And it looks like this. Same thing, give it a little heat, finger press it back, press it good. And then once I've done that, then I give it a spritz of flatter, and then I press it again, and we have a unit that looks just like this. And we all go, wow, I did that. Yes, you did. Now we need to use the other side of our tool. We need to use this other portion of our tool. This this area over here now is what we're going to use to trim down our unit. And what's great about the Studio 180 tools, you hear me say this all the time, you can make this in numerous sizes. So if I wanted to make this one inch big, I could. If I wanted to make it six inches big, I could. But for today, we're doing four and a half inch cut size, four inch finished. So let me show you how you trim it down. All right, so I always start with the point on the upper right. Now, again, I'm right-handed. If you need left-handed instructions, they are in the instruction page. And then I just line this up to where my seam placement line is right on that seam, okay? And we look and make sure we're within the four and a half inch wiggle room. And we are, just like that, we're within our four and a half inches. And now we're going to trim. So we go up and over. And right at this tippy top, right up here, that very tippy top, that is um, where your quarter inch seam really comes together. See right here? Look at that. That's where your points are going to meet, right there. And you want to be sure that's spot on. Okay? So we have that lined up back out just a little bit more okay now we're going to take our ruler lift it up and rotate the unit now we're going to lay this down and we're going to be on four and a half inches on the side here and on the bottom where you see four and a half inches side and bottom we have a little carrot right here we are going to make sure that's all lined up just perfectly 
and then if everything works out great we've got little notches right here and right here where our seams line up so now we're going to trim it just like that and now we have a perfect four and a half inch corner beam okay so I'm going to show it to you one more time a little faster just so you can see it so we do our point at the top come up here lay this out and you can kind of see once you get comfortable with it it does go pretty quick and of course by the time you get to number 60 you'll be just cooking right along won't you okay just like that we have another one all right now for this week's project for this week's portion of the project you are going to make 72 I did say that correctly 72 of these units all right so don't feel like oh my gosh I'm so overwhelmed you know yeah it is a little overwhelming to do 72 but once you get going and you kind of get a rhythm to it you'll be amazed at how fast they will go what I would do is I would pick one day to piece them together and then I'd pick another day to trim them down all right so that way you're not doing it all in one day all right so um, if you have questions feel free to reach out to us on Facebook on messenger don't forget to go to your downloads on the Google links that's in the blog post on the Facebook page um, also on the Facebook page I actually posted the file um, the you this video here is going to be available on YouTube to watch and rewatch and watch again so um, you'll have me there in your corner rooting you on so it is going to be doable and you will make a beautiful quilt all right you guys have a great day and we will do this again next week all right bye bye